Now most, if not all, of the outdoor photographers that I know crave periods of solitude and isolation, but when this comes at the restriction of not being able to move more than a couple of kilometres from home, and only for a walk, it puts an entirely different slant on things. In truth, I have been somewhat in denial over the last few weeks, thinking that I would be out and about in no time at all, shooting all the places where I love to go, but it's just not happening. With that in mind, the best that I can do is indulge in one of my favourite photographic genres, macro photography, and those of you that follow me will know this already. Now I am very fortunate to live where I do. It's by no means a national park, but I am surrounded by private grazing land which is bounded by native hedgerows, dotted by the occasional field pond, and even a shady stream at my fingertips. So with that in mind, I am leaving the confines of our property boundary this morning and venturing out to see what I can find. So I've had a little wander around and as luck would have it, it's a lovely dewy morning. Um, I've stayed within the confines of the, the one field that's at the side of the house and I've wandered around for about 10 minutes looking um, at various arable plants um, to see if there's anything really worthwhile shooting. And to be fair, once you get your eye in, there's actually quite a lot of, a lot of subject matter. And one of the things that really struck me first thing this morning was this little plant here that I've got the camera on at the moment. Now, I've only brought one lens out, I, I did carry the whole bag out, but that's just for ease. The, the camera doesn't have any strap attached to it, so um, I've just literally had the, the, one, the, the one lens attached to the camera inside the bag and a remote release. I've not brought my tripod, um, I've watched various films over the last couple of weeks and it seems that people are entering into the spirit um, as much as possible and not carrying tripods when they come out and about. So I did bring my little bean bag which offers some support and stability when I'm shooting at low shutter speeds and that would just fit inside my pocket to be fair and I could just carry it around. So the, the plant that I've found is this one here. It's a typical arable weed but like all weeds what they really are are, are wildflowers. Um, because it's, it's only just gone sunrise, um, the actual flowers themselves have closed up pretty tightly and that's going to be the case with everything I find this morning. But because we've got lots of dew, um, all the little hairs on the side of the plant, on the stems and on the leaves are really picking up all the little speckles of light and they look really lovely close up. I've chosen um, one of the plants that's got two stems coming out, um, so I've got a nice sort of arrangement so that the way that the flower clusters are within the frame. Now this particular plant is called common mouse here. Um, it's called that for a reason when you see the photograph if you look at the leaves um, they're, they're called as such because the, the leaves are very very soft and furry just like a mouse's ear. There is another variety that you might come across called sticky mouse here. Now that's for all intents and purposes is exactly that, the same looking as this plant but where the hairs all up the stems and the leaves um, are normal, the sticky mouse here has got glandular tips to the hers, so that's one to look out for, it's a little bit more unusual. But this looks really lovely, if I put it on, on live view at the back here, um, I will show you. It looks really nice and I've set it just, just lovely within the frame to, 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 to sort of take up a large proportion of the frame but not be too over dominating. It's probably taking about 50% of the frame up in total. So I've got that on f6.7, I'm on 100 ISO and shutter speed is a fifth of a second um, and that's as simple as that. I've, I've used a very shallow depth of field because what I don't want is, is the background coming into focus and at close range things like the hedgerow for example that's running along the back of the frame here will show us a dark line so I've used a very very shallow depth of field to try and eliminate that. The problem I've got here is because it's such a flat area of land when I get low to the ground the sky starts to creep in very easily. Now with a tripod I could have sort of lifted the camera up a little bit but I'm trying to work with the conf within the confines of limited equipment so I've just got it off the ground just enough enough to tilt it to just show the grass and um, hopefully the, the hedgerow isn't going to creep in frame. I can just see it ever so slightly at the top um, as a slight darkening to the frame but I think I think there's enough of it out of the frame to not be distracting. So here goes. That's the first one in the bag. Thank 
So the plant that I found this time is a plant called sweet vernal grass and it's just just here and there's a there's such a little grouping of it just sticking proud of the rest of the grasses and this is the grass that in summertime when the farmers uh, cut in the fields and you get that lovely sweet smell that's the grass that does it if you take note of the flower heads when you just want to show you the image it's got quite a scruffy appearance to it and if you see it in the fields just just break a little bit off and have a chew of the stem it's got a beautiful sweet flavor to it a really nice grass but i've got it here and it's backlit um, as with um, the other plant that i did the mouse here and uh, the light's coming through the little um, leaflets on the st on the stem really nicely. I'm not sure how how it will work as a photograph. Certainly for a stock photograph, it would be really good because it's it's a nice example of it. But in terms of a clean image, um, there's a bit of problems. You've got so you've got a dark banding of the hedgerow at the back there, and you've got lots of other grasses dotted around. So it's not what I would call a clean, pristine image, but it's still nice nonetheless. And uh, it's certainly a good example of that particular type of grass. The problem I've got is, is really not having a tripod. Um, I'm having to work low all the time and I've seen lots of things at different elevations but I just can't get to them. I don't want to handhold because I like to shoot at 100 ISO as much as possible and because I've got a 100mm macro lens on I've got to have a shutter speed that is at least a hundredth of a second to be able to hand hold. But the other problem is, is that when you're hand holding, because you're moving all the time, it's difficult to get the focus exactly right. And chances are when you press the shutter, you want to focus on exactly the place that you want. And because depth of field is so critical at high magnification, it makes it very, very difficult. So for that reason, I'm sticking with the bean bag at 100 ISO because that's where I'm going to get the nicest images. I just got to find the subject matter. That's the problem. This thing has actually stopped moving around now, so I'm going to take that and then try and find something else. So I think this is going to be my last shot of the day and for the last shot I really wanted to capitalise on the backlighting and what I've been looking around for is um, a dock leaf that's flat across its entire um, side to side top to bottom and that's been really quite a challenge finding that on the whole dock leaves are um, quite concaved I think that's the right word, convex, convex concave, not quite sure. But um, on the whole, they're quite difficult to get one that's flat across the entire surface. And because I'm using a macro lens at such close distance and I've actually put an extension tube on, it's very, very difficult to get um, depth of field all across the frame. So I've tried my best to find one that's, um, that's as flat as possible and I think I've got one that will do because the sun's coming in quite low I'm having difficulty trying to see whether I've got sharpness across the entire frame but I think I'm there or thereabouts and it looks really quite nice the light's coming through all the veins are, are really showing up lovely and you've got the central rib which I've just aligned at a slight angle just to make it a bit more interesting so I'm on f27 like I said to really try and get as much depth of field as possible um, half a second exposure and 100 ISO and uh, I think this will do me for the morning all in all I've struggled but I've quite enjoyed it it's really made me work um, hard this morning not only am I struggling with the fact that I've got a field with very very little botanical interest but I've also got um, no tripod and just a beanbag to work from so I can't work with anything that's literally above two or three inches above the ground and that's really been quite difficult to find lots of things along the the hedgerow there but I just can't get to them so here goes it's been nice to work with some constraints for once um, certainly challenging but uh, here goes 
last shot. Yeah, that's not a bad way to end the day. So if you've enjoyed this morning's content and you want to see more, don't forget to please subscribe and ring that bell for those all important notifications for every time a new video is uploaded. Please leave comments below, let me know what you think of the images this morning. It's been a bit of an interesting one with limited equipment, but I've enjoyed it nonetheless. So until next time, bye for now. It's always the way. The only way back to the house, you think you've finished. I did this in the Cairngorms. I had um, a lovely shot right at the end I wasn't expecting, and the same has happened now. Just on my way back to the house and uh, walking back, and of course, all the grasses are beautiful. They're all full of these beautiful little droplets of water all on the tips and on the sides of the stems. But the film finishes off pretty much where it, where it started with the uh, common mouse here. I've got this one plant, I'll just point it out just here. It's got a lovely curve to it and you can't fail with something like it. It's got such a lovely shape and all the hairs on the leaves and the tops of the plants are all got these little tiny droplets of water all being picked up by the sunshine. Um, it just looks like a beautiful sea of speckles, really, really lovely. And this one single plant just sticking up in amongst them. I've lifted the camera up, I've had to take my jacket off, I just needed another three or four inches height just to eliminate the hedgerow in the background. I'm on f8, 40 to a second, 100 ISO, really nice way to end the film. Um, and there we go. That really is the end. Until next time, bye for now.